If you're planning to purchase a business, uh, expand a business, do some renovation work, or even purchase the property on which your business is operating from, I recently had an opportunity to speak to Maggie Liu from the Development Bank of Canada about this very subject, in particular the financing options that the bank offers. This is what she had to say. So we will first have a discovery call, discovery yes. meeting, just yes. to get more details about the different types of components in this project. So there's yes. a very few components. Yes. So the first one I would ask around is how much is the unit in yes. terms of if you have a, have the opportunity Correct. to purchase the unit that yes. you're in, right? Yes. So that would be the first step. Yes. The second step is I will look at your financial statements mm -hmm. to see if your business cash flow can support the debt that you're going to add on. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a healthy debt or whether it's too much debt where um, maybe you need to scale back the purchase of the building for now mm -hmm. and you know continue to grow the business and the revenue and the net profit. Correct to the point that you can support mm. the purchase of the building. Mm -hmm. So during the discovery meeting, um, we will go through those data, the financial statements. What's the projection going to look like, uh, projected financial income after you take over, let's say, the building. Mm -hmm. So then the current rent that you're currently paying mm -hmm. will go towards the mortgage payment instead, Correct. right? Yeah. So we will add that rent back mm -hmm. to the net income to see how much can the business cash flows healthily support yes. the debt? So after going through uh, the discovery process, yeah. then what would be typically, I just want to see uh, how involved in the project uh, the BDC is. So some types of like documents or information we need to collect mm. will be um, the individual, the shareholder's personal net worth form. We will need them to fill out an application form from mm -hmm. the BBC standard form. Mm -hmm. We will ask them to give us the copy of lease agreements, um, the listing brochure of the building. Yes. Mm -hmm. If things are looking good, mm -hmm. then we kind of start the process by you submitting an offer on the building. We kind of pre-approve you to say, okay, we look at all these financials. We look at what could be the approximate selling price of this building mm -hmm. and we kind of give you a number to work with. Mm -hmm. Like what's your maximum purchase price that you can um, you can support. Yes. Whether it's a high leverage financing, for example, if we can do 90% financing based on your financial performance, do you have that 10% down payment source of fund available? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. once we go through all those exercises, you submit an offer, mm -hmm. you get an accepted offer, mm -hmm. and that's when I will start my work to actually put the application together and submit into underwriting to get an approval. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, your realtor needs to do some work for us as well. Mm -hmm. right? And I'll be the realtor, so now I want to hear me. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> what you have to do is make sure you have we, yes. everybody, have enough time to go through the process. So the subject removal date mm. or the subject removal period yes. is different from a residential transaction because a residential transaction typically seven, Correct. seven days. Yes. Um, but with commercial, one month mm -hmm. is really typical and I would say minimum mm. uh, for a one month subject removal period because you have to go through the bank's processing mm -hmm. of financing. Mm -hmm. You might need to go through an appraisal. You might need to get an env environmental report. Mm -hmm. um, the realtor also have to ideally um, give some comparable yes. data mm -hmm. to the banker. Mm -hmm. So we know that it's fallen within the market mm -hmm. pr uh, market uh, range. Market range. Mm -hmm. If for a lot of reason, right, like during the 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 growth of or high demand of industrial unit, for example. Often mm. we've seen that these uh, sold per square foot might be higher than the recent sold. Mm -hmm. That's fine as long we can have the rationale to support to say this location is really keen and strategic to mm -hmm. the business. Right. They have to be there. Mm. And mm. the inventory mm. there in that lo area is very low. Mm. That's why you know, maybe the square foot is smaller. So with the smaller mm -hmm. warehouse, mm -hmm. the price per square 
foot tends to be higher mm -hmm. than you know a very large mm -hmm. facility, right? Mm -hmm. So we put all these uh, information into consideration mm -hmm. when we mm -hmm. when we kind of consider what's the reasonable mm -hmm. market value. Mm -hmm. But if the market value goes way beyond what we think is reasonable, um, the bank is not going to support really the the overvalued portion. Mm. So in that case, the business owner will have to, mm -hmm. you know, come up with the maybe additional down payment, mm. or the realtor has to do some work to kind of convince us that this indeed is reasonable, and mm. we go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I would imagine that in some cases, um, even though it may be that the per square foot price may be lower than uh, the average, but if that business is in the wrong location, then it's not going to be able to support itself. So looking at the whole business holistically, yeah. it, it might make sense in some in some cases, but in some cases it might not make sense, just depending on the type of business and and where that uh, business is located in, yeah. rela in relation to the market. If, if they're doing like logistics, right? Yes. Um, or if they're doing it wholesale, mm. online, mm. then it doesn't matter where your warehouse is. Really. Yes. But if you're really needs to be client facing and picks up pickups and people have to come to you, then mm. that strategic location is really important mm -hmm. when thinking about where to purchase your, your mm. space. Mm. Third situation is where maybe the business or the coffee shop cannot mm. support the purchase of the building at the moment. Sure. We kind of focus back to renovation yes. and employment. Yes. So renovation, typically what we ask for is a quote, mm -hmm. a quote from a general contractor right. to kind of give us an idea on what's the estimate, what's the breakdown of the job, mm -hmm. right? Painting, painting um, flooring, uh, new new countertops, uh, etc. So yeah. we need a list of we, we need a, a quote from yes. the contractor. Yeah. In terms of equipment, we ask for a list of equipment. Yes. You know what's the price? Where are you getting the get it from? If it's from local, that's fine. Mm -hmm. If it's from overseas, then we need we have a additional form for the owner to fill. Like where is the where are you importing it from? Mm -hmm. um, that kind of details. Mm -hmm and we go from there. So in some cases, for example, in the hot pots or whatever, they might have <laughs> yeah. some specific exclusive equipment, right, that comes yeah, or from... Or the ventilation, right? Well, yeah, exactly, or the ventilation. Yeah. yeah, and those can be quite expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going through the permit to get it, uh, going through the permit, and then going through the, the contractor and renovation. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So typically, when doing a renovation, we want to ensure um, we want to confirm how many years left on their lease term, sure, yeah. right? For example, if they only have one year left mm. with no option to renew afterwards and they want to spend a lot of money in terms of, in terms of renovating space, then yeah. my question to mm. them is mm. why? Yeah. Like, what's your rationale? Are yeah. you going to approach the landlord to yeah. hopefully negotiate a another renewal option? Mm. Because you're spending a lot of money here. Yeah. And when you're, if you have to leave, you can't t really take those away from you. Yeah. So that's one key. It's like how can you, s if you're spending a lot of money in your space, mm. are you securing your space? If uh, Condo Cafe wants to do uh, the renovation, mm -hmm. do we have uh, we have to have all the, uh, the the permits in place before we apply to, to you, or can it be part of the process? You don't have to have the permit ready before mm. you approach the bank, mm -hmm. but you will have to uh, prepare the the list of renovation, like the mm -hmm. ideal mm -hmm. situation, mm -hmm. and the quote from the general mm -hmm. contractor. We'll mm -hmm. do like another not pre-approval, but we will let you know after our meetings and analysis to see how much we can lend you. Mm -hmm. And if you agree to those terms and conditions, then you can go through working through the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. I heard somewhere that uh, the, the terms could be um, different from the, the normal commercial lenders, and also the payment schedule could be more lenient uh, and in favor of business owners. In what way could, for example, BDC be more favorable to uh, business people in this kind of situation? Typically, we 
offer a principal postponement period to when we onboard a client. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you have a period period where you just pay interest only. Mm -hmm. And once you transition, once you make the transition and your business at the lead location or at, after the new project that you executed is generating positive uh, return for you, then the principal payment and the regular payment will kick in. So mm -hmm. we kind of give you the initial break in the, from the beginning mm -hmm. for your transition time. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, depending on the types of business model, like some businesses are very seasonal, mm. right? For example, whale watching. It can mm -hmm. only be in the summer, correct? Mm -hmm. So yeah. if if they're doing a land borrowing from us, mm. we can kind of schedule the payments where they only pay during the summer months. I see. Yeah. BDC is there for growth. Mm. So if you have a project in mind that will fuel your business growth mm. to bring you to the next stage, mm. BDC is a partner that you should definitely talk to mm. um, in addition to your own bank. Mm. So we come hand in hand, right? Because your business daily operation and your accounts are with one of the charter banks. Mm. If you want to diversify your banking and your borrowing, BDC is a project-based lender. I see. So we come in to do a project lending, but it does not affect your daily operation, the ins and outs of your cash flow accounts with the, your existing bank. Mm. So doing a business with us, you don't need to change your pre-authorized debit payment with your vendors and customers. Mm. Everything stays the same and mm. we're just coming in mm. to partner with you to do a growth project. Pro growth project, yeah. exactly, yeah. So we're an operating business. Uh, the, uh, the BDC is more focused on the expansion side or uh, the project side as opposed to the day-to-day -day operation side where we would need a, the, to have accounts with uh, the, the regular uh, bank, banking institutions for the uh, uh, credit card facilities yeah, credit and card, things like that. Yeah, right? uh, checking, saving. Yes. Yeah. Because we don't look at individual uh, and personal assets as much, mm -hmm. but we don't look at their key ones. Mm. So in a sense, we're really focused on your business. Can mm. your business support this growth project? Mm. And we're based on our decision of the holistic view of the business. Mm. So yes, if your personal is strong, that will mitigate the risk of if should things fail, the bank has security over, mm. but our decision is really how the business. Mm. We don't have any retail products, so we're not gonna. We don't have access to your day to day, your wealth management, your investment portfolio mm -hmm. that you have with mm -hmm. a, your, your private banker, right? Mm -hmm. So in a way, we're very unbiased yes. on yeah. the overall net worth mm. of the individual, and mm. we're really just focused on the business itself potential of that business the as well. The potential and the opportunity that we can mm. add to the existing business. So mm. that's why in a way, BDC is not really, doesn't really work well with mm. investor who wants to purely um, do buy and flip. Mm. Um, mm. We want to create the opportunity and support a business where it's long term, mm. it's mm. for growth, mm. and will build the e economy. Yeah. Sometimes where I have a conversation with a business owner, they mm -hmm. will ask about leasing the space versus buying the space. Mm. So for me to look at is how much rent annually that the business owners is currently paying and what's the ideal space that if they were to purchase, what type of price range would fit their needs. Mm. So if everything checks the box, Buying could be the long-term uh, strategy because oftentimes, you know, after running a business for let's say 30, 40 years, when you're about to retire, many business owners sell the business assets mm. and just keep the, the building mm. and act as yes, a landlord. That's very popular, um, yeah. So if, you know, after a few years of operation and if your business is in the, uh, in a, 
in a situation where you can support uh, securing your own space is something to talk to your banker definitely mm. for long-term growth plans. Yeah, and certain businesses uh, have that profitability and the ability to pay uh, to be able to purchase it's the property. Not yeah. all businesses can do that. Yeah, like sometimes retail restaurants are not that expensive. So. We might think it's really expensive, mm. but let's say we can find a retail shop, smaller retail shop, mm. you know, for less than a million or close to a one million. Mm. So mm. depending on what's their margin, right? Mm. Yes. How much foot traffic they're getting. Yeah. Are they selling anything online? Right? Mm. Something that has a reasonable profit margin. Yeah. yeah. Restaurants, we do a lot of financing for change of ownership, like buying and selling mm. businesses because. Mm. The survival rate they can't pass through that mm. that's why we're seeing more Thanks. of these opportunities right yes. we don't really see a lot of restaurants buying their own commercial yes property or retail space mm. is because they have not a lot of restaurants are able to survive first survive yeah build their retained earnings mm. and then to a point where they can support a, a retail mm. shop so mm. it's hard, way harder for them yeah yeah yeah, and that's interesting that you say that uh, there's a lot of cases where people maybe are thinking of down, uh, just retiring or something and selling off their business. Uh, so oftentimes there, we see a lot of like manager and business buying the business mm. at the end when mm. the owner is, uh, is going to retire. Mm. Be and we like to finance that type of project because mm. Mm. the manager mm. knows what they're doing. Yes. The manager already knows the ins and outs, so there's no, there's very little transaction period. Mm. So we like to uh, do those type of projects, and we see that very often. Yes. That's why when we evaluate a application, mm. when you know buying a business, mm. for example, if you come to me saying, hey, I want to buy a business that ge that's currently generating two million, mm. let's say is what type of industry, like engineering business, mm. Mm. and then. I ask you, um, so are you from this industry? Mm. Do you have any background or experience in Correct. running Correct. Yeah. this business? Mm. And if your answer is no, mm. well, that's a very big risk for yeah. me to give you <laughs> yeah. the, the capital yeah. to buy into this business because there's nothing that really for sure for, for me to foresee that, that you will be successful. Yes. Right? So background experience of the management team mm. buying into a business is really important mm. Mm. if you don't have the experience do you have a partner mm. that's have some experience in the project that you're about to onboard together mm. so at, at least there's some help mm. there's not it's not like everybody coming in from mm. brand new and from scratch mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah and even if they do come in with a background or experience we prefer there's a training period that mm. the existing yes. that the seller will provide. Yeah. Maybe a two weeks to a month. Yes. Just so you know yes. they can, you know, uh, step by step. Yes. Go over the operation and the sales cycle once. Yes. So then the the person coming in has less of a headache <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure everything out. And especially if the manager stays in the business, that yes. will definitely help. The transition period is could make or break. Exactly. So in, in some cases, the person buying the business is just not able to do that type of business. But in some cases, as you say, they can can do that business. But there needs to be a, a transition stage where uh, you know where do we buy this stuff? Where do we where do we source you yeah. know the, the raw materials and yeah. it's a it's a new leadership style too, right? Yes. For someone coming in, so yes. that's why we understand there's definitely a transition period, whether it's short or long, mm. and that's why BDC is offering um, clients on board to have that principal postponement period mm. because it will get, give the new owner some breathing room in terms of cash flow from yes. the beginning. So once yeah. everything is in place, once everything has been set up right then they can start the regular payments it will be m much more smoother mm. people aspire to be business people uh, business owners but it's a totally different ball game it's not something that you just think will happen will happen there's just a lot of stuffs ins and outs 
and having uh, an organization like BDC to help us along the way to, uh, in terms of the training available to new business people, uh, you know, just shortens that, that learning curve because that learning curve can cost a lot of money and it could cost, yeah, not only time but also, you know, investments that you thought were going to turn into profits but mm -hmm. could turn into losses. So, uh, both in terms of the training and the, and if, you know, just to be able to, to come to a comp uh, company like BDC and just to, to, to see if our business is viable or not because I we may think this is such a fantastic idea but then through experience and uh, through, through seeing other companies, you know, the BDC may be able to see right off the bat that this is not a, a, a good uh, business venture to go into. Uh, On our BDC website, bdc.ca, there's a lot of free resources mm -hmm. that business owners uh, can find valuable. Mm. There is a tool called the Industry Benchmark Tool mm -hmm. where if you just key in your business information, like for example, what's your revenue, expense, profit, oh. and it will compare your ratio mm. to other competitors mm. in the industry so you can see whether you're uh, in, in the range or if you're lower or higher. So this tool is a good starter to mm. see kind of where you're at compared to your competitors mm. and you kind of make adjustment along the way. Mm. So that's that tool is free online. Mm. Mm. I, I would very encourage every business owner to to make to do that exercise. And then if you're open to you know improving your situation, mm. come talk to any BDC representative and we do a holistic view, whether it's you know improving the the top line or the bottom line. Mm. Interest rate has definitely increased way higher than before pre-COVID. Mm. So, but what I encourage business owners to think about is not purely what the rate of interest rate is. Mm. Let's say it's now 9% compared to the previous 6%. Mm. The 3% difference, or the 4% difference, yes, is higher, but what's your ROI and your return if you borrow that money to mm. fuel your business cycle mm. Mm. and your business is generating mm. a, mar a mm. margin of mm. higher than nine percent mm. mm. right so essentially your 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 focus should be using other people's money mm. to make yourself more money and mm. have them as long as your margin is higher than the cost of borrowing correct so a business owner shouldn't just look at Oh, the interest rate is a lot higher. I'm not going to borrow. Mm, mm, mm. Well, what's your opportunity cost mm. if you're not going to borrow and mm. not going to start a mm. new project? Mm. Your your competitor will. Mm. So mm. in return, you don't want to to just stay as is. You might want to monitor or you know evaluate which growth to go for. Mm. It might not be three project at once, mm. you just does need to decide which project makes more sense mm. at the current time. But it's not a time where you do nothing. Mm. Capitalize on the, on the opportunities yeah. and not lose the opportunity because opportunities come and they come and they may come and they may not come or whatever. But if we have the opportunity and uh, the, the cost uh, to acquire the opportunity is less than uh, the actual value that the opportunity is. Yeah. Then it doesn't matter whether interest rate has gone up 30% yes. or 4%. Yes. Just a little shift in mindset. <laughs> yes. So that's why improving the bottom line is very important. Yeah. Especially if we see the top line might fluctuate, mm. right? Mm. The bottom line needs to be very secured and safe. Yeah. yeah. Need to keep a tight ship. Yeah. Not, not <laughs> let the bottom line run wild, right? Otherwise, yeah, yeah. yeah the business is going to struggle. Other things yeah. like that. During economic uh, economy uncertainty business owner needs to be more open and willing to absorb other knowledge and insight you know if we take covid for example mm. things have changed after covid mm. right um, so if your business model stays the same and didn't make any pivot to adapting the environment that we're in, it might not be a long-term successful, it might be, it, not, it, might, it might not be successful in the long run. Mm, mm. So 
as a business owner, your willingness and c your curiosity is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So BDC, yes, we do financing. Advisory, we do. But advisory, I agree, is not for everyone. The business owner has to have that right attitude and the right curiosity mm -hmm. to, you know, get most value out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a different mindset. Some people are fixed in their ways. This is the way I want to do it, and, and they're not open to possibly more um, innovative ways of doing things that, in the long run, will be more more durable, more more, more profitable. Yeah. So yeah, because the economy is just always changing all the time, and yeah. disruptive uh, disruptive systems are coming yeah. up. And what I usually say to business owners is, you don't know what you don't know. Mm. So just keep that open mind. Yeah. And adapt to the yes. environment. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you did, please hit the like button. I look forward to speaking to you guys again. Bye for now.